I know reviews of this film before, but I just felt like doing it again. I thought I did a good job the other time, but you know, obviously I'm gonna do better. This is my view on Batman Begins, and I, I just, I just want to do things I feel more relaxed now. Usually, I'm more like can think more clearly, and uh, so yeah. Batman Begins tell the story of Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. It flashbacks to, uh, throughout the three act structure of him, it flashes back from present and past. So the film opens up with him falling down a bat cave, Bruce Wayne, as a child. Then he becomes afraid of bats, and then his parents take him out onto an opera play where these people dress up as bats. It was his father's idea. So rightfully, they get gunned down. And because they are forced to leave the Harper house, it's because Bruce is afraid of bats. So, uh, therefore, they have to leave the Harper house because, they can t because his uh, dad knows why he's getting sick, but, uh, uh, but his mother doesn't know for some reason, I guess. But I feel like his dad knows. This is after he's giving a history lesson on the way to the Hopper place with, uh, by his dad about how he made this train station, how we made this train station and building up how, building up the legacy that, uh, that he made for himself with Bruce Wayne's dad and how one day the company will one day be his responsibility when he's gone. And he's murdered by this guy called, some guy called Joe Kill, who is later to reveal it, hit it hide by Valcone, who runs everything, including the cops of Gotham, which most of the cops are crooked, so, yeah, so he runs most of Gotham, even the cops. So, yeah, and, uh, so, Rachel, who works with the on law side, is in denial about the law being broken. Later then to prove that uh, Falcone's and her Falcone broke her law. This is after he's revealed to, uh, this is after Bruce decides that he can't go through with uh, killing a Joe Cho as a phone group fledged adult. Because he's already been gunned down by some other guy. Beat Bruce Wayne to it as an adult. This was when uh, Bruce Wayne's all, e in, uh, all emo douche mode. To everyone. And he just wants to slap the guy in the face. And luckily uh, Rachel is a uh, uh, person to slap that bitch in the face. And then she gives Bruce some wisdom saying his father but he just changed himself. So he throws the gun away then confronts Falcone saying he's not afraid of him. And uh, Falcone points out how he didn't think everything through of what he could lose. So he, um, as a grown fledged adult, Bruce Wayne decides to disappear for a Gotham for like 20, for I don't know how many years for, for well, almost a decade or over a decade or so. That means 10 years. And uh, comes back to Gotham as the train with the League of Assassin. The, he couldn't go through with the, uh, the and after training for the Assassins uh, for a period of time, only to reveal that their true plans and their true agenda is to destroy Gotham and let it die. So it can be born again. Along with every citizen's with it. Bruce sees that this is a wrong thing, the wrong path to go down, so he turns against on Lee and can't go through his killing, establishing that Batman doesn't kill. 
one of his guidelines. At first, he was okay. So, uh, so yeah. And uh, so he turns only the lead turn on him when he, he turns only after the lead turn on him and try to kill him. And there's a in the third act we find out that uh, Raz Al Ghul in the comic pronounced as Raish Al Ghul didn't die in the fire, but the one who he saved from the fire, Liam Neeson's character, is Raz Al Ghul. Not the one who died in the fire, who looked more like Raz Al Ghul from the comics, who pronounced Raish Al Ghul in the comics. So yeah, best of confu- a bunch of confusing shit. Uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, turns out at a party, Race Out Gold, the real Race Out Gold, shows his face and reveals that he was really Liam Neeson. And been played by Liam Neeson this whole time. This is after Batman, uh, saved Rachel's wife. I mean, saved Rachel's life. Who was, and Rachel was Batman's childhood sweetheart, as in they dated when they were kids. And played. And she tells, uh, and on the form of Batman, and it was a Batman persona, that he injected her with secure after, uh, after the scarecrow injected him, her was a poison. So he gave her the antidote, and he knows it works because he took it when the scarecrow injected him with poison. He was out for two days, or three days, or four. No, he was out for one week only. And it took the, till it took the antidote to fully do his job. So he, uh, as Batman told Rachel to give the antidote, or the another the other antidote to Gordon, and have it for so that when one time comes when uh, and he she tells, her, and he just she doesn't t- tell her, really tell him what tell she doesn't really. Is told what uh or what uh from Batman of what um what are uh, the scarecrows dangerous and uh and uh yeah so she doesn't know because Batman doesn't know but he finds out that he's just got some bad feeling that uh the scarecrow's got some one or two tricks of his sleeve so just in case going into the one that he's got the she wants the going to the other antidote to belong to go on and just in case the things get rough. And um uh, things do go to shit in the third act. Gotham is in chaos, a bunch of it's basically under the world terror that's happening because people are going crazy. All a bunch of criminal has been released. From uh, Arkham and Blackgate prison, and a bunch of civilians, the civilians are dying. So it's up to Batman to put the men into the madness before uh, Raz Al Ghul kills of all what's left of Gotham. By blowing up the city. While bombs attached to the train, yeah, it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's a little convoluted. The plot is a little too much going on. It's not as, it doesn't flow as nice as you want it to flow. And you know, it's even when you're watching it, that some of this, a lot of this, this stuff should have been taken out of the final product of the film. But I think it was one of the better comic book adaptations we got and one of the better Batman films we could have gotten and it's still one of the best Batman films that we could got and also one of the best comic book adaptations of all time so I guess I don't know um yeah so Batman uh 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 you know the whole non-kill rule that Batman uh made up for himself that every life is precious well, he breaks that rule in the third act by laying race Ralph out gold die on the train. Because, you know, Ryan's serving time in prison. 
uh, because, and this is all because, not because he's too dangerous. No, this is because Bruce holds a grudge against Ra's al Ghul for hiding the bounty on his parents' head. See, they were, all, they were the ones that were really in charge of his parents' death. Yeah. So, remember in the first and second act, it was about Tony, um, that uh, highly bounty, the, kill, the serial killer to kill his parents. Well, in the third act, it's not really explained, but it's really by the League of Assassins, yeah. It's one of those twists that you can, that you can clear wasn't that very thought of, but you can just like, but people just want to look very, very smart. For you to see with a staff passion about the project. So it doesn't make uh, that much sense at all. And um Hang on, I need to get a drink of water. Uh, back. Um, so also in the second act after Batman has made the uh, Batman identity after he comes back from Gotham you know how he uh, brought Val Kilney to judge and he hooked him up to a uh, 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 giant giant light while he was unconscious therefore he avenged his parents' death by Bring the killer of justice. So you would think that the whole thing would come full circle and uh, race Al Ghul with something big and he wouldn't get vengeance by murdering a man or a woman uh, as a, or any human life. But he would simply bring the person behind bars. Nope. That, that would have been smart, but uh, he decided to go the dumb and easy route. So going in, Batman are buds now, and uh, they work together to uh, hunt down the Joker, who's very into theatrical stuff like Batman. Who they are saving to use that in the underwhelming sequel called The Dark Knight. Batman Begins is a very conflu, overblown film. But it's still engaging to watch, and I give it a 10 out of 10, nonetheless. Because saying, even though it's very confluent and overblown, because it is one of my, I can say that's one of the best Batman films of all time for live action. Although saying the Dark Knight, the sequel, uh, is one of the best Batman films, is like saying Batman and Robin is like one of the best Batman films, when in other, in other words, it's not. I still enjoyed those f Batman and Robin in the Dark Knight, but it's not one of the best Batman films. Not even close. Same goes for 1989's Batman film. Not one of the best. Now here are my picks for the, uh, before I end this video, I'm going to tell you the best live adaptation of Batman movies. No way, I'm just going to tell you the uh, best theatrical Batman movies because there are some truly anime ones. Okay, um, Lego Batman movie is on the list and so is Batman Begins and Max of Phantasm and Batman The Dark Knight Rises and Batman v Superman and Justice League and Batman Returns and Batman Forever. Those are the best Batman films. They're not specific in any order, although Batman v Superman is definitely number one. I don't know which is what's after that, oh, okay? I might save that for a different video, but uh, to give you the uh, exact order, I'm still deciding. I gave this movie a 10 out of 10, yeah? I've, I give it now, anyway. I, 
Wait, I, I did, I did give it a 10 out of 10. Okay, that's all.